Welcome back to the cabin. Sean James here from My Self Reliance. So I haven't actually gone and uh, found many books on log cabins because this cabin build has been so organic as I've mentioned in the past. I really just collected materials and then fashioned a design in my head and kind of built it and then modified it as it went depending on what materials I ended up finding on, um, as I was building and also how it fit on the land. So it really wouldn't have been helpful for me to follow a set of plans like blueprints, uh, but it was worth referring to some technical manuals. And really, all the searching I did, the best one I could find was this book here. It's called The Craft of Log Building by Herman Fleps. It's translated and adapted from the original 1942 German by Roger McGregor. So basically what he's done is taken apart um, and sketched the layout or the design and the technical aspects of these log buildings all around Europe in, in particular. I think mainly Europe. So very, very good book. I, I highly recommend this book. So it's definitely worth looking at. Like I said, I didn't follow it for layout or blueprints or anything, but I did refer to it when I was looking at doing window and door details and and um, wall splices and, and things like that. Didn't end up using many of the techniques, but I do think they're valuable and I would like to incorporate them into some future projects. So I'm definitely holding on to that and I'll be referring to it regularly. Uh, One Man's Wilderness. Uh, Dick Prennicky, story of Dick Prennicky, who went to Alaska in 1969 at the age of 53, I think it was, and his plan was just to build a cabin and stay in it for a year, and he ended up staying there 30 years, on and off. I think people don't uh, quite know the story uh, based on the films. What was I capable of that I didn't know yet? Could I truly enjoy my own company for an entire year? And was I equal to everything this wild land could throw at me? I had seen its moods in late spring, summer, and early fall, but what about the winter? I do recommend getting the books and, and reading his journals to learn a lot more about the man and about his adventure. Um, so essentially the first few years he, he uh, only spent the summers there. And he would spend the uh, winters back home and I think Iowa is where he was from. So One Man's Wilderness was actually written by Sam Keith. So but what he basically did is consolidated Dick Prennicky's journals. And a lot of this is still in journal form. So whatever uh, Richard Prennicky got up and wrote or wrote at the end of the day, made it into these books essentially. So there's One Man's Wilderness and then there's the following follow-up book. More readings from One Man's Wilderness, the journals of Richard L. Prennicky. Um, another misconception is that the, the films, which have been aired on PBS forever since the 1970s, and you can still get them uh, to this day, it was actually made, the, the film was produced by uh, Bob Swearer. He actually produced and narrated it himself, Bob Swearer did and inserted some footage from from uh, his son and, and his own. Uh, so you'll see some of the clips are clearer of animals, for example, like moose walking through the, the willows, and that was actually inserted after, I think, well after Dick Prennicky shot the original footage. So Dick Prennicky's kind of become the legend as far as doing like a one-man cabin build like this. He built most of his cabin on his own, and a lot of it was from natural materials, so stuff he collected from the local area at Twin Lakes, so the, the spruce trees that he cut down, and the moss that he put on the roof, for example, and the, some of the boards that he cut for the and you know for the door and and uh, roof and so on. Uh, he did use some modern materials as well. He used uh, nails and metal, uh, roofing two layers of roofing membrane and uh, whatever else he needed you know, that he couldn't really provide for or, or gather from the land, he had flown into him, including all of his food. He didn't eat much off the land other than uh, fireweed and 
some wild game that he collected from what hunters had left. So, so if hunters shot a caribou or something and left the rib cage on the mountain, for example, he would go and, and collect that and, and live off of it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's basically the books that I'm reading that I have kind of as my reference material. Uh, there is a fairly good description by Dick Prenicke in One Man's Wilderness about the cabin build and some decent photographs. Uh, if you also check out to Lake, um, Lake Clark National Park's website, uh, there's some um, film and, and uh, photographs there as well that's worth looking at. So pretty interesting. Uh, it's worth checking those out. But uh, I'll keep reading excerpts now and then on my videos just to see what he's, he was up to back 30, 40 years ago, 40 years ago plus. Well, I think I'm going to head up and uh, go to bed. I planned on reading these actually up up in bed but got a comfortable seat here it's just the right temperature down here it's about plus 15 I would say Celsius in this little corner hotter near the stove and much much hotter up in the loft so I'm gonna let it cool down a bit up there before I head out